Hello everyone, welcome to episode 165 of the J-Situation podcast. I'm recording this on June 6th, 2023. That's ah, D-Day. Yeah, D-Day, the invasion of Normandy in 1944. That was actually also a Tuesday. That's interesting. Yeah, so how, how are all you folks doing today? Good. I'm giving you a chance to answer. <laughs> no, I, I hope you're doing well. I'm doing well. Uh, I'm extremely happy. Actually, I'm, I'm extremely happy to report that my ribs are healing. And I'm super stoked on that. Uh, it's awesome. Yeah, I'm back in the gym. I am lifting again. That is so cool. It's pretty great. Gym, bike, work in office and lab by day. And of course, Pew Science by night. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Yeah, big wins. Big wins all around. It's June. So June is going to consist of me taking it a little easier. I'm going to take it a little easier than May. Um, we don't get so many months like we did May of this year. May was heavy. May was a lot. So let's not do that again for a little bit. <laughs> okay, that was a lot. No. But uh, it's funny, today, gosh, I've been, oh, today was one of the days that I stared at a computer screen all day doing, what was I doing? I was ca- I was doing calculations today, it was kinematics for a weapon, actually, uh, not a weapon like we talked about on this podcast, but a, you know, much larger system, and I was just, oh my goodness, I... You know, generally nowadays I'm managing projects and stuff. I'm not doing as many of the calculations, but this time I, 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 I was the one that needed to get into it. It was a, sen- it's a sensitive thing, and I was working on it and all day long. And I, I only took a break for lunch, and I had and and a meeting. And other than that, I was literally glued to a screen the whole day, and it was driving me nuts. So, so yeah. Uh, that's kind of my state of mind. Uh, so this podcast today is part two of the Huxworks Flow 762 TI talk. That's right. Last episode, episode 164, uh, I covered the 308 bolt gun performance of this silencer. And so this time on this episode 165, I'll speak about the, the 556 SBR performance of, of the 762 flow through silencer. The, the huge surprise, okay, um, and you know, uh, it's true, and, and that's not to take away from the bolt gun performance, you know, surprise, I think they're both, I think the performance of the Sansa was equal, was actually equally surprising in their own ways, but uh, but we're going to get into that on today's episode, okay, and uh, but first, um, a word from my gracious sponsors, you know, the folks that helped this podcast um be possible for you to hear that they they make this podcast happen. And guess what? I have a, I have some I have a pretty exciting announcement today. Uh, in fact, I am extremely honored and excited to announce that the J Situation podcast is now sponsored by Legion. That's right, Legion Athletics. Yeah. <laughs> Can you believe this? <laughs> this this timeline. I I can't. I cannot make this up. I am telling you, Legion Athletics is now a dedicated sponsor of this podcast of this entire effort. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so let me and and this is like this is kind of an ad, but at the same time, let me explain this to you. It's it's wild. So, I um I, I want to tell you about why I'm going into business with these folks. Legion approached me after hearing the podcast. Um, oh, excuse me. Uh, a- after hearing the podcast, uh, they approached me, and their main pitch to me was that they have supplement products that are right up my alley, right? I mean, they didn't say those exact words, but that was the gist of it. And at first, I was skeptical. Uh, you know, having used a variety of sports and nutrition supplements over the years, right? I've, I've I've worked out for a long time. I've lifted for a long time. I've used a lot of stuff for a long time. So when, when a supplement company comes to me, I'm like, ah, like, yeah, you're not going to fool me, pal. You know what I mean? Um, so they, you know, I started talking with with the gentleman there, and he sent me some stuff to try. Um, you know, I went to their website, and I started reading their information. Guys, if you thought the Silencer Sound Standard had a lot of information, bro, the Legion website, it's pretty intense. 
So, so far, just to, just to let you know what I've done so far. So far, I've used their whey protein, two different flavors, um, and I've used their pulse pre-workout, and I've used their recharge post-workout, okay? Um, and the funny part is I'm actually using their post-workout as an intra-workout, meaning that I'm using it as I lift, like you would like an electrolyte drink, even though it, it does not have electrolytes in it. Um uh, it, now, is it for that? Uh, I, I'm not sure it is. Okay, but I, I, I'm, I'm trying it right now. I, I like to experiment. Um, also, I've used their their magnesium supplement. One thing I have not used so far is their vitamin D supplement, but I'm probably going to be adding that. Just for for example, um, I actually just me personally, what I do, I and I've, what I've always done, I usually use a magnesium and a vitamin D supplement every day, and and creatine every day okay I, I actually don't know that legion sells a standalone creatine but the post-workout supplement does have creatine in it okay and we can talk about creatine stuff later if you want i'm just i'm giving you background on like me actually using these things this is not this is not for fun necessarily you, you know you know you know what i mean so i mean like the, the fact of the matter it is i i need some pick me up here and there for example so my schedule is too packed, too hectic, too long, and a lot of people are counting on me to get things done. Okay, not just here, but in a lot of places. And so I can't risk not being on my A game. Okay, the last episode, I was using that Pulse pre workout. Okay, I told you I was using pre workout. That it was that it was Pulse. I did a little bump before I started this episode. Okay. <laughs> Actually, a serving size is two scoops. L uh, let me tell you right now. If you take both scoops, I'm I'm excited. Oh my god, I'm excited if you try this pre workout. Because like as I as I use some of these things, and I use the other products they have too, and try them out, I'm gonna let you know how I like them. This is, we're gonna learn together. Okay, I'm gonna tell you right now. And uh, there, and I'm not going to say his name just because I don't want to blow up his spot. But the gentleman, the, the gentleman I deal with at Legion, he told me he was like, "Hey, man," because I told him like why, like why I like the pre workout. I liked how it made me feel, and he told me that it has a component that essentially, I'm not going to go into the chemistry right now because I'm going to butcher it. But essentially, it has a component in it that takes the caffeine kick. And normalizes it. So if you were to think of the caffeine kick as a waveform that we, we're gonna talk about today over time, it's gonna smooth it's gonna smooth the effect out. So what does that mean? It means it's not gonna be like super, super jet fuel ramping up, and then it's not gonna be huge crash. It's essentially gonna it's gonna smooth smooth it out. He explained it to me. I'll research it more when I have time. It just so happens we just finalized the contract like this afternoon. So I was like, okay, we're going. Boom, Legion. I'm going to announce it right now because I want you guys to 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 see it. You know, I, I, it's awesome. So I'm I'm still learning about some of this stuff, but I'm telling you, I have been using it. It is awesome. Okay, I've looked I've looked for a long time for a pre workout, and I compared a lot of them. Okay. Um, and again, I'm recovering from some injuries. I'm lifting again. I'm literally using a lot of this stuff. My entire time lifting, like my powerlifting career, just casually lifting my whole life, I only use creatine and whey protein in a pre-workout. Uh, the, the best way to get swole is consistency. Like the end. Okay. Now I'm going to read something here. I wrote this down. Legion says, this is their, their quote from their website. They say, you don't need supplements to build muscle, lose fat and get healthy, but the right ones can help. And I read that on their site and I was like, I like the cut of your jib, sir. That's exactly what I think. Cause you don't need supplements to get jacked, but they help. They can, if you know how to use them, okay? So I would I would say there are people who, you know, there's people who, you know, they prescribe whole foods and they don't like using supplements. And to that I say, more power to you, bro. You, you must have tons of time. That's awesome. Cool. But, but there is something to be, to be said about, you know, you down a bunch of whey protein in a pinch, you know? 
or you add it to something just because you want the extra gains, right? You just like add some protein to, to something if you're not getting your the, the protein you want, or you you get it in quick post workout and it's whey protein, so it's going to digest pretty quickly, right? What are the two best forms of protein to get digested super quickly, right? Whey and, and egg protein, right? You know that, right? That's that's bro science, homie. You know that. That's old school. That's that's Arnold stuff. Come on now, you know you, you should know that, right? So whey proteins is it's excellent, excellent. Excellent bioavailability, right? You get it fast. You digest it fast. You get it. You good on with your day. You've already got your gains. All right. And pre workout, when you're tired, you need focus. Absolutely amazing. Mineral supplements, vitamin D. Come on, son. It's all amazing. You can get all that from food. You can get all that from food. But I'm busy. Are you busy? You might be busy. You might not be busy. But I'm saying this is what I use it, right? So here's the thing. Here's the thing I've worked out with these guys. If you guys go to legionathletics.com, okay, company's called Legion Athletics. I call them Legion. The URL is it's legionathletics.com. Use the code word PewScience at checkout. You will get 20% off of your first order. That's right. That's actually a lot. Now, get this. This is the crazy part that they told me about today or yesterday. Um, you get loyalty points when you open an account there, right? So every time you buy something there, you get loyalty points, whatever. Okay. Those loyalty points, when you redeem them at their website, it they're good for 5% off, right? As you as you collect them. But if you if you keep using the Pew Science code on every order, you get double loyalty points. So that means you'll get 10% off. Or ten dollars off ten dollars off a hundred dollars. Right, and you're gonna spend a hundred dollars on supplements because you're gonna buy whey protein, you're gonna buy pre workout, you're gonna keep buying it. Understand? So, just if you always use the Pew Science code, you'll always save money and you can use it unlimited times. Okay, so tell your friends, get swole, go buy stuff at Legion. <laughs> We're all, yeah, but but seriously, and I know a lot of you that listen to this and you're gonna you you lift. So, we're gonna try stuff and we're gonna get jacked. It's gonna be great. Um, I'll, I'll put a link in the show notes too. That way you guys can click on that and you can use that too and you can share that link or whatever. But we'll figure it out. It's going to be awesome, okay? I don't spend a lot of time talking about that, but I'm super stoked because it's not just like, I'm not, this isn't just like an affiliate program with them, okay? That's not what this is. Like, yes, there's a a mechanism by which you can click a link and it's an affiliate, blah, 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 but they're sponsoring this effort. They're sponsoring the podcast. This is contract. Like, this is, this is serious. This is, this is like my other sponsors, Okay, this is like this is a big deal. Um, I think fitness is important. I think being strong is important. And I think companies like this that put stuff on their website that doesn't have artificial stuff in it, they tell you what all the ingredients are. I think that's important. Okay, go to their website, legionathletics.com, read the ingredients. You will not see the weird proprietary blend stuff. What do you mean proprietary blend? Bro, tell me what's in it. This is like, I'm putting this in my body. Can you tell me what it is? You understand what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm serious. And and this is one of the companies that actually tells you what's in it. Okay, that's important. I'm telling you, especially for the people who are subject to drug testing. Because I know people who have popped popped hot on drug tests because they've they've taken supplements that have something that is not WADA approved, for example. Okay. And you saw it WADA or you saw it approved. I know some of you athletes need to worry about that. Okay. It's important. Okay. So go check it out. Legionathletics.com, code Pew Science. Click the link in the show notes. Save some money, get swole. The J Situation Podcast is also sponsored by Top Gun Range Houston. You know about these guys, right? If you're in the Houston area, you can. Go check them out. 15-lane indoor shooting range, largest firearm rental fleet in the whole state of Texas. That's right. Rent pistols, rifles, shotguns, machine guns. All the folks there, they own silencers. They know what's going on. You want to talk to them about silencers? Guess what? They listen to this podcast, and they go to PewScience.com. They're a member. They look at the member data. They can help you with your silencer purchases. That's right. They shoot the silencers, too. Come on, man. Check out their firearm rental fleet at TopGunRange.com. And you can find them on Instagram at Top Gun Range. That's true. And what? You want to go even more crazy? This podcast is brought to you by High End Armament Technology. That's right, heat. High End Arms and accessories. If you need something extravagant, rare, or just a little wild, call Robert and his crew at High End Armament. 
it's uh it's it's a good thing i'm telling you he's a good resource to have put it in your phone as the wolf or something like put just put it in your phone okay if there's a weapon system that's rare if you are having trouble locating it if you need to get into night vision or thermal and you want to know like what the latest stuff is talk to robert highendarms.com on instagram at high end arms and they even have a facebook page which is also high end arms i hope they can help you folks out if you need it tell them jay sent you and as always the podcast is brought to you by silencer shop you can use their kiosk to do your fingerprints and photos electronically and in turn you cut down on errors you simplify your silencer purchasing process you get a money back guarantee it's great no transfer fees no paperwork errors just you and your silencer with no drama It truly is silencer ownership simplified. And there's more coupon codes in the show notes for Two Shot Gun Club out of Arizona. Magpul, use the code PSTEN to get $10 off your order of $100 or more. And last but not least, this podcast is sponsored by Pew Science. Pushing the silencer industry forward one test at a time. Visit pewscience.com for the suppression rating, the simplest and most accurate hearing safe ratings for your suppressed small arms based on true human inner ear response of the entire gunshot from before combustion takes place all the way until all the combustion is gone it's the entire thing it's what we do you can see it in the data and pew science is the home of the silencer sound standard seven sections the most in-depth and accurate silencer data and analysis in the entire known universe that we have explored check it out on pewscience.com And finally, you can support this podcast. You can support Pew Science and all the testing I do for you by joining with a membership at PewScience.com. And it would be based of you to join Pew Science as a member. Join us, won't you? And Or, you know, you don't have to. It's cool. You can donate. That's cool. You can do a one-time donation thing. That's on the website, on the review page, and the podcast page. And you know what? If times are tight, maybe you're just, you know, casually listening to this because... You want to know what's up? That's cool. Give it a good rating on podcast or podcast provider like iTunes or Spotify. Just, you know, shoot me a five star. Tell me what's up. It would be awesome. (laughs) Okay. I guys, I got two topics for you today. Okay. Topic one, sound signature review 6114, the Huxworks Flow 762 Ti on the 556 Mark 18 SBR. This is the technical discussion. Okay, it's the technical discussion of the publication that was released last Monday on Memorial Day. Okay, this is a companion episode to episode 164 in which we had the discussion of uh, review 113, which was the same silencer, the Flow 762 Ti on the three-way bolt gun. This podcast is meant to go with that. That's right. Topic two, June is kicking off. It is. It's the sixth day of June, the sixth day of the sixth month. June is kicking off. There is more data to publish, tons more to test. Eh, it's going to be super fun, I think. And uh, we will be taking a look at the Surefire SOCOM 556 Mini 2. Oh, what's up? An extremely prolific silencer. I think it's a very popular silencer. That silencer is on loan, courtesy of a gracious benefactor. And uh, also the, the Knight's Armament, the, the new 556 QDC CRS PRT, ABC DEFG. The the supercalifragilistic XB Allidocious silencer. Yeah, the 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 Knight's Armament 556 QDC CRS PRT. That's coming too. I'll do some stuff for Pew Science members on that, I think. It's gonna be awesome. Get ready. Topic one. A time of 18 minutes. And 59 seconds. Oh, what is up? Oh, that's ridiculous. I, that, that's the longest I've done on the intro, right? You didn't get a 20-minute intro, but I had to tell you about Legion Athletics. <clears throat> See? So, hey, what? You thought you were going to skip to this topic and you are going to skip the ads? And now? Oh, what? What? You skipped it and you don't know that, you don't know that this is sponsored by Legion Athletics? That's right. I'm using their Pulse Workout Pre... And the flavor I'm using? Oh. It's, I think it's the blue, blue, blue raspberry brother, bro, brother. Let me tell you right now, you take, you, before this podcast, I took, mm, I took like half a scoop, basically it's around there. Let's call it a half serving size is two scoops. I took two scoops yesterday 
what did I do? What was yesterday? Okay, I lifted on Saturday. No. Yeah, I lifted Saturday and Monday so far this week or in the past few days. So I did I did squat, bench, and deadlift. I'm getting just getting back into it. So I'm doing full body every time I go. So squat, bench, deadlift, pull-ups, dips, rows, curls. That's like my standard go-to if I need just 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 to hit the gym just for a just to, you know to kill it. I'll just do that. And um, so I took two scoops on Monday after work. I left the office, two scoops. I went, went, got to the gym, changed, popped the two scoops in, bro. After burner, I'm telling you, so it, it, it was a slow build. It worked. I got my lifting done. I was driving home in my truck. I was gripping this steering wheel with one arm and I was like, you know what? I have this constant, I was still in this constant zone I could feel. And it was weird because it wasn't like, it, it didn't fluctuate. Like I, I talked about in the intro, it, it didn't go up and down. It was just like a constant energy source. It was, I'm telling you guys, I I forgot the exact, ing- oh, I'm hold on. I know, I know we're going to talk about silencer. Just one second. I'm going to go to the, I'm, I'm going to read the ingredient because the guy told me about it. Hold on. Pre-workout. Okay. It's called Pulse. I'm, I'm going to read, I'm going to read the thing it has with caffeine. It has some other stuff. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what it is because he told me. One second. Okay. It has caffeine. So 350 milligrams of caffeine and hydrous in two scoops. It has something called L-theanine, which, and has 350 milligrams of that, which is supposed to essentially smooth the waveform. Okay, it's a, it's supposedly to it's gonna remove the peaks and valleys. Okay, it's literally, you know what L-theanine is? It's essentially you're filtering the waveform. You're doing what we would not do for a silencer analysis. Okay, you're essentially like if you were to plot the effect of caffeine on your brain, on your body, and you you have a spike in the in the beginning and a huge trough at the end the l-theanine is supposed to level those okay do i know all the technical uh ins and outs of that not exactly am i going to research it more absolutely does it seem to work anecdotally in my body Uh, apparently dude Uh, because that's what i that's what i noticed so wild i'm on it right now uh i'm closing that okay topic one yeah this silencer on the mark 18 Published it on Memorial Day. Um, We covered the pure suppression of this silencer on its native cartridge diameter last episode. Okay, we covered we covered the pure suppression, and now I think it's a good time to talk about the silencer performance in the Mark 18. Um, Because just like in that previous review, there is data in this review that matches Huxworks internal research. Okay, um, w- with regard to how it might influence a weapon, it's really interesting. The Flow 762 Ti does, in fact, trap gas for longer than the Flow 556K. Imagine that. Okay, so go ahead and pull up the article. It's Article 114, um, Sounds for Sound Standard SSS.6.114. Okay. Um, guys, it's the 114th article in the standard. It's so ludicrous, dude. Like I, I'm literally an insane person, but that's okay. You know, normal does not get things done. Sometimes, sometimes you have to go beyond, and we're we're doing that. We are going. We're we're going beyond. Okay, same silencer we just talked about last episode. Okay, this is the same silencer we just talked about. Same one, and you've seen the Flow 556K review from Pew Science on this gun, right? You, you've seen that. That was back in Article 83. Okay. So, that's right. Let me pull that up. Let me verify. Because I, I have a link in this article to it. I'm fairly, yes, fairly certain. Yeah. The Flow 556K on the Mark 18 was in Article 83. <clears throat> One second. <clears throat> okay, so let's, uh, 14. 31 articles ago. 
31 articles ago, you saw the first iteration of the Flow technology on the Mark 18. That's right. And back then, in, what was it, August? Yeah, August of 2022, about a year after the first HXQD review, <laughs> Huxworks listed my test report on their website. Remember, they did. That's right. That This was the beginning of a large public display of the ongoing Pew Science world domination. No, <laughs> take note. No, just kidding. I'm just, I'm half kidding. Now, so there's something important for me to tell you that you probably don't know. Um, some of you might know. I, I have tested the HXQD762 on the Mark 18. I have not published that data. Uh, it's an old data set. I haven't gone around to it. it. It was internal Pew Science research I did back when I tested the HXQD556 internally. Uh, and I am here to tell you the results we are going to talk about here today for this Flow 762 on the Mark 18 do not apply to the HXQD762 on this gun. Okay? Um, something you guys need to understand, uh, the overbore of the HXQD technology, like that is when you put a 30 caliber HXQD silencer on a 5.56 gun, it is not that efficient. Uh, that is something I noticed in the analysis and the testing, and it's really important, and it matters a lot. And 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 so one of the biggest takeaways for me personally from this Flow 7.62 Ti data on the Mark 18 was the fact that Huxworks cracked this nut of figuring out how to make the thing work when it's overboard. And I, I I hate that I don't I hadn't published the other one. It, but it was it was a funny spot because like I I I had done it with member funding and I hadn't published it and hadn't gone around to it. And then by the time this one was it's time to publish this, I hadn't still hadn't done it. And I was I wasn't gonna do it at the same time. I was like, uh and so I was like, well maybe I'll just do it later. It's like you know I'll just I'll I'll circle back to it or whatever. Um, so, I mean, for me, I, I hate that I hadn't, I hadn't published it, but I'm telling you, and so I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to illustrate to you like how big of a deal it is to me, but it might not be to you because you haven't seen it, but I just have to take my word for it. The, the fact that Huxworks figured that out. And, and, and when I, when I, when I say figured out, figured it out, like how to make it work. We can actually, we can say that in a different way. The flow technology lets gas expand into the first annulus fast enough for this to actually function properly with 5.56. And I'm totally here for it. Okay. I get, that's how I would say that. Because it, the fact that this is a 30 caliber flow through silencer and it does this on the Mark 18. I think it's just as big a deal as the fact this thing works well on a bolt gun. I think it's just as big a deal. Uh, I'm telling you, there's a reason these two reviews had to be published on the same day. And when I say had to be, I mean, I mean, I made that decision. Uh, I, I strong, no, I didn't make the decision. I strongly recommend it. I said, I told Huxworks it was, I, I believed it was very, very important because of what both of these reviews showed. I, 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 thought and I, what I told them was that I thought it was very important for you to understand the totality of what you're looking at here okay and so let's get into this so bottom line up front 35.7 composite suppression rating on the 10.3 inch un, standard untuned mark 18 35.7 composite okay 33.9 at the muzzle 29.8 at the ear what in tarnation I mean, it's ridiculous, right? It's ridiculous. I didn't think it would happen. Okay, I'm sorry. I just didn't think it was. I just didn't think it was going to happen. But after the bolt gun testing, I had my suspicions. Okay, when I saw the increased blowdown time in the waveforms and the bolt gun testing, when I was doing the analysis, I was like, "Oh my god!" I was like, "What if?" I was like, "No." Well, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. And then I did this, you know, and. I, so let's look at the data, okay? Let's look at the data in the article. And you know what? If you're following at home, you can you can use the free version. I won't leave you behind, okay? 
All right, scroll down in the article past uh, the initial words, uh, past the first table. You don't need to look at that right now. Okay, let's go to the fingerprint, figure one. Okay, now guys, you got figure 1A, figure 1B. Figure 1A, entire time regime. Figure 1B, zoomed in. Now, you've seen flow technology on the Mark 18 before. Okay, what do you see here? Eerily similar, isn't it? It's eerily similar. Go back to the flow 556K review when you have time. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll let me, I'll, I'll, I'll click... I'm gonna I'm gonna go to it real quick. I'm gonna scroll down to figure one B. How? Yeah, the the general shape shapes of the initial waveform are 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 very similar. There's some key differences, but oh, it's like it's funny. This is like when the, you get to the people are like, oh, he, how do we know it's real? He's not showing videos. It's like, <laughs> guys, look at the fingerprints. Look at the features that are all explainable. Come on now, isn't that crazy? So yeah, so. The same thing happens with the flow seven six two. That happened with the 556K, okay? But there's a but there's a super important exception, okay? And this is this is this is it, it, you can see it plain as day, and it's actually super important. The Flow 762 controls the secondary jetting much earlier in time. Okay, that's that's really important, and that's what you see in Figure One B. Now. You, you get you, you get the first couple chalk and jet, okay, but it's controlled very fast, and to the point that you hit way less rarefaction, okay, it's going way less negative. In other words, right there in pressure. Now, the the, the gas momentum it's not wild right there, and guys, having less of a violent disturbance is evidence of what? Slower flow. How? Longer flow pads. More gas expansion. Slower gas velocity. Okay, guys, the same thing the Flow 762 did on the bolt gun, it's helping with here. But this time, the higher pressure gets to take full advantage of the silencer. Okay? Okay? We saw the increased travel time of the gas on 762. We saw the increased travel time. And on 556, with this high pressure on such a short barrel, oh boy, howdy does the bigger flow know what to do with that. It just it loves it. This is what it this is it, you can almost see it in the waveforms that the silencer wants this. It, Guys, it takes longer to blow down a Flow 762 on the Mark 18 than it does a Flow 556K. It takes longer to blow it down. Look at figure 1A in the full time regime of interest, okay? Then look at figure 2A in impulse space. Then compare the two articles, so the, the Flow 762 and the Flow 556K, okay? Look at the impulse accumulation rate from the flow 556K, and then look at the rate from the flow 762. This thing has a bigger bore, but it's trapping more gas for a longer period of time. Okay? How about them apples? It's still trapping more gas for a longer period of time, and it has a bigger, bigger bore? With the flow design, if you feed it high pressure, what happens? It occupies the flow pads. Give it as high a pressure as you want. All that does is make the pressure want to go into the annular pads. Right? Remember, guys, this is supersonic compressible flow out of a gun barrel. It wants to expand. That is all it wants to do. It wants to expand like you want a machine gun. Okay? To, to use a, 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 a human anal analogy here. <laughs> Trust me. It's all it wants. Um, and boy, how do you, does it expand? The... The flow geometry says, give it to me, baby. That's what it wants it. If you can expand rapidly and you have enough of a runway to keep expanding and flowing back and forth and back and forth, and eventually you're going to you're, you're gonna slow down. Your, your gas velocity is going to... Physics would dictate momentum would eventually slow. You're right. And we see that when we look at impulse space. 
But how does the momentum differ between that of the Flow 506K and the Flow 762? The Flow 762 is slower. Why? More expansion time and travel time through the flow paths. More time. The dimension of time. Keep talking to you about the dimension of time. I keep saying it. I've said it for you now probably over a year. I've, 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 I'm hammering it into you. I'm hammering it into you to, 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 for you to think about this. Now, guys, think back. Put your history hats on. Go digging. Go digging. Remember the first OSS silencers. How big were they? What did they do? They needed the longest time available, the longest distances. They wanted to send gas on a scavenger hunt, son, right? Now, you can do that in a smaller package. You can do that in a smaller package. That's what 3D printing did. That's what the Flow Series does, okay? I'm grossly, I'm grossly oversimplifying this, but I'm giving you the main takeaway here. There are shock physics and heat transfer going on that are wild, okay? But you have the benefit of time. You can draw this out. You can draw this out. You can lengthen the flow paths. You feel me, okay? Okay, research note one in the article. Research note one, really important. Okay, it's really important for you guys. It, it, it gives you a bunch of evidence, a bunch of evidence here, okay? This is all, P science is evidence-based. This is evidence-based, Okay. Research note one tells you what I just said in formal detail. And what's the net result? What's the net result? Longer effective contact time of combustion gases with the silencer internals. Longer than with the HXQD series. And when you make a flow bigger, longer time than with a smaller flow. Okay? Okay. So, million dollar, but what 10 100, 100 million dollar question, how big can you make a flow and have it still work? Right? How big can you make it and have it still work? I don't know. I don't know. But maybe Huxworks does, right? We'll see. How long can you send gas on a scavenger hunt without some some of the gas saying, "Hey man, get out of the way." You know, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. But it's funny you look at you look at this member review, right? It, I I think I put how many how many I put thirteen research notes in this article, guys. I put thirteen. There's thirteen research notes in this article. I, I think I broke broke a record. There's a lot to talk about. Okay, the this performance this performance really did surprise me because I thought. What would happen is that we might get a higher shooter's ear rating. Um, I mean, we got close to the 506K. We got really close, very close. I think if if I hadn't done the DSX testing and the DSX surge testing, I I, I don't think the picture would have been as clear. Because um, now we have all that data. I can I can I can say definitively. That Mark 18 ejection port signature, like standard Mark 18 ejection port signature, is a really important thing uh, with regard to hearing damage risk potential of the shooter. With a standard AR built for normal function, your flow rate is everything. And if you think you're going to cheat this ejection port with magic, you're high. You you must be high. Okay. Um, I, I don't know what people think you can do with an AR, but the ejection port is a major hazard, and it will bite you in the butt, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay? The Flow 762 takes care of your muzzle signature here in a big way. W what is it? 30, what did I say? What is it? 33.9? I can't remember. Hold on, scrolling up. Yeah, 33.9 at the muzzle? What in the world? What in the world is that? Almost makes me mad. It's so good. Like, what in the world, dude? Like, this thing flows that fast, and it's doing that. Dude, the flow technology is wild, man. All it took, look, I, I say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like grossly oversimplify this. All it took was making this thing 1.8 inches in diameter and a little longer, and you get those flow paths long enough to really work. I mean, I, d d does it ramp up back pressure? I mean, 
It's a weird thing to think about, but it, it does make gas flow through the system for a longer period of time, and expansion to the flow pass is not the same as free expansion out of a jet nozzle. Okay? When you have a jet nozzle, an unsuppressed gun, we have a bare muzzle, expansion into those flow paths is not the same as free expansion. It's not the same. Okay? It's just not, guys. And you know what? Huxworks says this in their white paper of the two silencers, the the the, the 762 Ti and the and the 556K. The bolt velocity from their data is ever ever so slightly. The bolt velocity is ever so slightly elevated with this silencer on the Mark 18 compared with the the 556K. Is it crazy different? No. But it is different. The, the bolt moving a little faster and if it's a little bit faster what does that mean it means that trapping gas for a longer period of time even though it's still moving made a difference to weapon function so if it made a small change if it made a small change in weapon function what did it do with the ejection port of the weapon did the ejection port signature get a little worse you know it's kind of crazy Me- members seem to dis- discuss this in the member version of the article the answer is quite frankly yeah i mean at the end of the day, this is an untuned Mark 18, okay? You're basically sitting close to the 556K at the ear. You have not tuned the gun. The muzzle performance is stupid. So you, you take you take a look at the bar chart, right? What is it, figure five, six? Figure six in the, in the review here. You take a look at the bar chart. You see a crazy thing. The thing, the thing has an impulse rise time. A momentum accumulation rate outside the muzzle that's way slower. But you know this thing is barely increasing bolt velocity. So what does this thing being near the SCI-6 and the Helios QD mean on this chart? What does that mean, guys, to you really to, to the people really deep in this? It means that the alpha parameter of the sensor is super low, and it means that Huxworks has figured out a way to make the gas path travel so long and effective that it literally draws out the impulse accumulation so much that the silencer behaves externally like a high-performance 556 silencer. You feel me? Like, like, what in the world, you might be thinking? You might be thinking, what in the world? Like, is this real? And yes, I will tell you, it is very real. It is very real. Pew Science members will remember, you will remember, that the Flow 556K can be boomy. And part of the reason it is, is the high flow rate. I will release an article for members again. Uh, I will show you the Flow 762 versus the Flow, the flow 556. It got less boomy. And it has a bigger bore, and it's a larger silencer. How did that happen? Gross flow rate went down. Remember my hypothesis? I talked about this before. Remember my hypothesis is about boomy signatures being driven by uncontrolled flow or rapid flow? Yeah. Looks like that is being supported with testing and analysis. Um, stay tuned for that, members. That's right. This is wild. Every single parameter in this article is consistent. Members see it in the member section in the earway forms. The public sees it in the impulse slopes. You see it in the blowdown time. You even see the exact same thing happen in shot five and six that you saw in shot four and five on the bolt gun, don't you? That's right. Figure, well, you can look at it in all the figures, but let's look in figure number, I'm scrolling back up. Figure number 2A. All right. Guys, these signatures are as real as it gets. The flow maintains efficiency during the shot string, and it even beats the flow 556K in first round pop. It just gets such high pressure. It has the capacity to handle it. It's just the right size. Guys, this is just the right size. This is the flow size you want. This is this is the size you want in, the, in this te- technology, I think. I think that's what we see in the data. I think that's the size you want. I think that's the size you want. So, elephant in the room time. What, what's the big? What, what, what's the what's the what's the nine thousand pound gorilla in the room? You want to talk about? It? Let's talk about it. Same composite suppression rating as the Surefire SOCOM five hundred six RC two on this gun, right? Right. Same. I'm scrolling down to the, to the table to look at the, the the detailed ratings. Yeah. Same composite suppression rating. 
How? How would the Flow 762Ti get the same composite suppression rating as the RC2 does on this gun? It's because it kills it at the shooter's ear, guys. Remember, the composites, the composite rating is a function of the muzzle and ear ratings. When a silencer achieves a higher rating in one area, the rating jumps. Does it? If the silencer does well at both the muzzle and the ear, rating jumps. It's alg It's an algorithm. It's algorithmic. It's it's just math. This is what the composite suppression rating was designed to capture. I know we don't always like the composite suppression rating because it oversimplifies things, but this is what this is the type of thing it was designed to capture. Okay. We have talked about the muzzle and the ear being paramount. They are. Those detailed ratings are the power of this. But here you see the power of achieving both. Remember, remember the HXQD556? It's 27 and a half at both the muzzle and the ear, right? The composite suppression rating ended up being higher. So what are you doing here? You're approaching such a scenario with a flow 762, but you have a muzzle rating that's almost 34. Guys, you're hitting, you're hitting SCI 6 levels of bystander protection here in the free field. And at the shooter's ear on this untuned gun, you are like five points higher than the SCI six. That's a jump, guys. That's a big deal. That's a big. That's a big deal. That's a SCI six is an advanced silencer. This is this, the Flow seven six two doing this. This is a very big deal. Okay, this thing is doing what the five five six silencers can't do. Okay, it's doing what they can't do. It and and then if you start comparing it to the thirty caliber silencers in the Mark eighteen. Bro, look at the Nomad. Look at the Nomad. Look, look at the Nomad. This was one of the craziest things I have ever seen. You put the Nomad on a bolt gun, or you put the Nomad on a Mark 18. The Flow 762 hangs on the bolt gun and beats it on the Mark 18? What? If you told me that was going to happen, I would be like, mm, I don't believe you. I, I don't believe you. But here we are. Right. This this to me to me guys this to me is such a big deal. The suppression rating has the power of objective comparison. Something very hard to do. Very hard to do. It's very hard for people to do that with silencers. And this right here is important, man. We so we we see all this. We see all this, and you know I, I have to make this point again. I, I make it a lot, but I need to drive it home because I want people to understand. You guys have a lot of data now, right? You, you you got a lot of data. You have a lot of data. You you have a lot of 556 data from me on a very dangerous host weapon, the Mark 18. You ever shot a Mark 18 unsuppressed? 10.3 inch 556? It will rattle your teeth, baby. Even without a break, it's going to rattle your teeth. You know how I know that? I test this stuff. And when I'm testing the Mark 18 unsuppressed, I'm studying combustion. I can feel it in my teeth. Bare muzzle. It's not pleasant. I don't like it. These short barrels. Even when, you know, you ever shoot like a, like I know when I shoot like the, the, the Q mini fix when I'm testing supersonic 300 blackout unsuppressed. It rattles my teeth. I hate, I hate supersonic cartridges, short barrel rifle like that. It's terrible. It's It's terrible. So we look at this chart. You look at research note 12. I, I want you guys to listen to me when I say this. This is, I don't take this lightly, okay? The Pew Science suppression rating is a damage risk criterion. Okay, what does that mean? It means it quantifies the risk of damage to something. What? Your ears. Okay, your ears. It is a hearing damage risk criterion. A DRC for short. That's what they call that. They call that a DRC. That's the acronym. Since it is a DRC, what does it mean when it gets worse? When it gets a lower number? It means your risk of hearing damage gets worse. What happens when you shoot a silencer on the Mark 18 without hearing protection that has a low suppression rating? 
it means it it's more hazardous to you. I put that in bold in the article. I want people to start thinking about that. I mean, let's cuz really, like let's why are we beating around the bush so much, guys? Let let's talk about human hazard, right? About you getting injured. Does that make you want to join Pew Science to support this now? If I start telling you I'm giving you the information that helps you uh, not to literally hurt your body? Guys, look at the chart. Scroll back up to the chart. Figure six. Okay. Tell me which of the manufacturers of the sponsors in that chart told you that they were selling you a product that would put you at high risk for hearing damage. Which one? How many use the words hearing safe? Which one? Which one told you they were selling a product that would put you at high risk? Arx, Razor 762, Warcomp, Saker. How lucky do you feel right now? You feel lucky enough to shoot without hearing protection with those silencers on the Mark 18? You gonna what? You gonna put an Arx on your Mark 18? Shoot without hearing protection? You are really? I don't know. You might be. Um, everything in this chart can can be compared to everything else. And I'm telling you right now, put on your hearing protection. And guess what? Everything's going to scale. What? You think you what? You think hearing protection protects you uh, 100%? What? You you think you think a, you think a super loud silencer is is just fine because you're wearing ears? Wearing ears? You sure? Okay. What do what are you, you going to do with this information? You gonna ignore it? That's fine, but but what are you ignoring? If you never shoot without ears, that's fine. Awesome. If sound doesn't matter to you, to awesome, fine. But right now, what I am showing you in this chart is reality, and anyone who ignores it, I, I want you to know what you're ignoring. That's all. I want you to know what you were ignoring. All right. Now, can you raise? the shooter's ear suppression rating on the Mark 18 with these various silencers by tuning the gun? Absolutely, you can. We, you saw that in Article 111 when the Mark 18 was literally tuned as a surge with the DSX. It, it became a suppressed upper receiver group when Maxim Defense put a, put their silencer on it. They, they literally shrank the gas port, the effective gas port size, and the, the shooter's ear rating jumped with a surge. Can you do the same thing with an ARCS, with an energetic armament ARCS? You look at the ARCS, 19.2 uh, at the ear, 16.6 at the muzzle. Can you do that with an ARCS? No, probably not. You probably can't. You, you probably cannot tune a gun to make an ARCS quiet. You probably cannot do that. No. When I shot that silencer, I thought I saw the Lord himself throwing a lightning bolt at me. Okay, I form three that silencer back to where it came from, and I am never shooting that again. So, yeah, yeah that's that just I'm telling you, there's no reason for me to ever shoot that silencer again. I do not need it. I don't need that. That I don't need that. So, there. So the reason I bring it up, there are levels to this, and I'm telling you right now, this is why I started Pew Science. Never in 100 lifetimes would you have this information without Pew Science. Full stop. You would never. There would they they the the companies. I don't care which company on here. They would never give you this information. It had to be done by an independent lab. So here we are. Okay, that's why. You understand? We're talking about hearing damage risk. They're not going to put that. They're not going to publish that. Okay. It, it just it was too big of a risk. No one was going to take that risk on. Understand? And so that's why you see this gets a little divisive and gets a little controversial, right? Because I'm literally talking, the suppression rating is a damage risk criterion. This gets really controversial, doesn't it? Because I'm talking about I'm talking about risk to your to your anatomy. It's a big deal, right? So yeah, I'm I have to say, all in all, with this silencer, with all this stuff, I'm looking forward to the future. Um I am. There, there, there's some unknowns though. I, I think there's some things we need to talk about that we don't know with this. And there's a couple. I mean, there's a there's a couple things, or there's a few things. Like for one, 300 blackout subsonic performance. 
Is it going to be lower? Is that performance going to be lower like we saw with the HXQD 762? Uh, I think yes. I do think it is going to be lower. Um, is it going to be as low as it was with the HXQD? I don't know. Um, I would guess not based on what we see in the physics here. The, in the physics we see, I would guess not. Based on the observed physics in the two reports you've seen so far, I think we get some higher performance on subs than the HXQD. Okay. How much higher? I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. Okay. I just, I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this unknown. It's, it, it's important to know. We don't know yet. The second thing, longer barrel 556 performance. What happens on a 14.5? Is that going to turn everything on its head? I mean, it could. I don't know. Testing has started. We'll see. It's crazy. I'm here for it. Remember, 14.5 mid-length gas, but it's not tuned. That's right. It's not tuned. We're using H2 buffer just like before. Okay? So remember, this is standard rifle stuff. What's the flow going to do? Is, is it going to drop net performance because the 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 pressure is lower at the muzzle. I don't know. Is it going to maintain performance due to the design and also with a superior flow rate beat literally everything at the ear? I don't know. It's going to be wild to see. Got to remember, that 14.5 mid-length gas, the dwell time is longer than the Mark 18. I actually don't like that. I, I, I look at that 14.5 mid-length gas upper that I'm testing and I'm like, I know that's a standardized host, standardized host, and I just can cannot help but think, for a personal gun, I would never use it. Although I just outfitted the 14.5 mid-length Daniel Defense Upper I bought for myself because I bought another one just because I wanted one to shoot for fun, just like you know for other stuff besides testing. Eh, I put a bunch of stuff on. I'm going to post a picture of it with this podcast. It's pretty Gucci, but when I see that, I'm like, if it was like my like. Like, if I had my druthers, I would push that gas port super far forward. Now, I'm going to put a Flow 762 on this one, so maybe it's awesome. You know what I mean? I don't know. I haven't shot it yet with that. I've been busy, but we'll see. You know what I mean? So we'll see. That's, like, kind of what, what, what my thought is. Like, one of the benefits of this Flow thing is, like, oh, man, I'm not going to... I'm not going to uh, increase my dwell time that much. I get to put it on whatever gun I want, not tune the gun. It's, like, perfect for guns that aren't able to be adjusted. Right? That's the cool thing about the that Huxwork stuff. Right? It's like you put it on your scar, you put it on your AK. You know what I mean? Like that's what I like. I think that's awesome. Cause like sometimes you don't want to sometimes you don't want to shop for a host. You just want to use the silencer. You know what I mean? Okay. Another thing to think about though, durability. Now, can you break this thing? Can you break it? Well, now I'm gonna be clear with you, you can break anything. You can you you can break any silencer. Will you break this? Will you break the Flow 762 Ti? Nah. Huxworks told me it's more durable than their old generation. Now, it's titanium, but gas impinges differently and the pressure is relieved differently. So I don't know. You know, people talk about titanium like it's butter or something. No, titanium is super strong metal. It's very strong metal. That's what makes titanium awesome. It's super strong and light. Now, does it get weaker when you heat it up? Absolutely. When do you need the strength? Do you, you know, how much strength do you actually need when it gets hot? Okay. And how are you causing it to burn when you, when you impinge upon it with, with muzzle jet? Okay. These aren't normal flash hiders and brakes. Okay. This is a little, this, the Huxwork system is a little different. So it's going to be interesting. I don't know. I would love to see some people do some durability testing. That would be cool. I would, I would want, if someone put that on YouTube, I would totally watch it. That's awesome. It, that would be entertaining to me because I'd love to see it. I haven't done it, so that'd be cool. Another thing I'll say uh, that I think we need to talk about that we a little bit of an unknown. Flash. Um, is the flash bad? I don't know. Uh, what about sparking? Sparking is different from flash. Is the sparking bad? I don't know. I need to check it out too. I will say, um, the, uh, I think some of you have seen the video I posted on my Instagram account, if you go to the Reels tab on there with the Flow 556K on an 11.5 machine gun with some normal ammo, that didn't flash at all, really, at night. So I, so will this 7.62 uh, Ti uh, flash because it has a bigger orifice? I don't know. 
Will the sparking, because it's titanium, be bad? I don't know. Does it break in, like Huxworth says, as you season it, so-called seasoning, by shooting at least 200 rounds through it? I think the flash, uh, I think the sparking might get less severe because there's less particulates in there after the 3D printing process. Now, does titanium sparking also happen because you burn the leading edges of internal geometry and the particles literally burn in air because they have a high surface area? Yeah, that happens too. So I wouldn't I wouldn't count on titanium sparking going away 100%. Will it be sev- severe on your particular barrel length and cartridge and firing schedule? I don't know. I, I'm just I'm I'm bringing it up because I don't know. All right. But those four things, the, the 300 blackout sub-performance, the longer barrel 556 performance, the durability, the flash, those are four things I'm wondering about personally. Um, all of them might be important to you or none of them might be important to you. Okay, just depends on your needs. There is no one size fits all silencer that fits every person's use case. There's just not, okay? Um, people People's uses are just too varied. There's a lot of different people out there. This is one, you know, this is one that's doing a good job, I think. I think it's one that, I don't know. Is is this silencer a silencer that's getting close for a lot of people as a one as a one and done rifle silencer. I don't know, man, for a rifle silencer, it's getting close. It's getting close for a lot of people. It, it's things like this that are super inter- inter- interesting, but to, to, today it's things like this that are super interesting to me, given the holistic gravity of this performance across, across hosts, across, across cartridges, you know, the history the attempts, the variations, the failures, the wins. It's just great to see. I th- I feel like I'm commentating on science or history right now. And I'm I'm totally here for it. Cause because the Hawksworks, I, I told you, I told you about this last time and what they went through to get to this point. Pew science, baby. Uh, it's gonna get even more wild, I think. But uh, so what a time to be alive, man. I I have it, I have the um hold on. It's it's right over here. Let me get my rifle one second. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm I'm unscrewing it off the the mount. Okay, I'm gonna post a picture of this rifle. Oh, I just unscrewed the silencer off the mount. You could probably hear me doing that. I have it in my hand right now. I'm gonna give you some final thoughts um, before I don't talk about the silencer for a bit because we're done right for now. With well, I mean we're done with the Huxworth. We're done with that Huxworth contract. So um, before I put this you know, in my inventory. Um, and, you know, don't look at it for a, a while. This thing, when you hold it in your hand, it's a little fat. It's 1.8 inches. I'm not mad at it. You know why they had to do that, right? The gas flip has overlap. This one's FDE. They make it in black. This thing's light. It's titanium. The mounts are super simple. Uh, it has got to be one of, and dare I say, one of, if not the, I know that's a strong word. It's one of, if not the, favorites to me for a rifle silencer mount because it's left-hand threaded to a taper and it self-tightens. It is the only, it is the only mount that self-tightens that I know of due to the distal vents on the silencer being vented at an angle. We talked about this last episode, how I gave you a homework assignment to do the calculations based on impulse in the free field of the, uh, the calculating the torque. That's a super, it's actually a really super complex calculation. So don't feel bad if you haven't done it. I was just like super amped on that. But but yeah, the fact that this thing gets tighter as you shoot it, okay, because it literally tightens it left-hand direction because of the direction of the vents and the fact that they had to make those vents the different angle on the flow 556k because the velocity was too high so the thrust was too and the thrust was too high it was getting too tight you can see the difference in the angle of the vents on this versus the other one i oh my god dude it's so crazy oh now i wish i now i would you know oh man now i wish i would have taken the picture of the two instead of just the rifle but uh maybe next time maybe next time oh that's a good picture i don't want to like blow up my feed just with pictures of this huxwork stuff but Oh, there's so much to talk about. And so you're holding the silencer. I'm holding the silencer and it's light. It does what I needed to do 
for a lot of weapons they don't have to adjust and that's the thing I, 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 it, my final thoughts are that the technology matured they made a bigger one than the 556k like we wanted them to and they ended up doing it in the 762 and it still works on 556 so what's the drawback you know what i mean it's like what if there was a steel a steel version would it be heavier oh dude it'd be heavier for sure would you be able to would you put up with that like i don't know you know what i mean like you know would people like be super mad like well it's really heavy because uh, now they're like well it's light but uh it sparks uh, it's like you know what i mean like everyone's like uh you know they have to they have to say like something negative right and it's like well it's like what do you care more about like what you want like a a 30 ounce system on the end of your silencer or you want you want something that is light and works and oh there you saw some sparking ones did that like ruin your mission sir like I don't know, it might like I know like flash 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 suppression can be super important, especially when shooting in a night vision. Uh, sparking can too. Like I understand that. Okay, like you, no one wants their night vision like adjusting due to like crazy like like flash. Okay, that's horrible. So I get that, but like I don't think this is doing that. Okay, we'll have to see. So yeah, I think it's cool. Um, I like the way it looks. I I like the brown. Personally, I, I think it's going to look cool on my scar. So that's awesome. Um, I hope it doesn't flash super bad. I hope I hope you know you need to clean these things. Do that. Okay? Don't let it, like, just, just don't just, like, shoot this all the time and not clean it because that's going to have a bad time. Um, all those all those flow paths that work so well, uh, why do you think that happens? Contact time. Do, do you think that uh, combustion products uh, condense out of the gases and de uh, end up depositing throughout the silencer? Uh, yeah. Do you think you should soak this? Uh, I think you should. <laughs> do I know the exact thing to soak it in? I don't. Okay, figure it out. All right. Call the manufacturer. But I know once you do that, you soak it or whatever, you can shoot it clean. So that's, that's, that's pretty cool. So, yeah, man. That's awesome. I'm super stoked. Um, to be able to discuss it with you. I'm extremely happy that I'm able to explain the technical performance of a silencer like this. I think this is a historical time in silencer history, and I'm extremely honored that Huxworks trusted me to once again perform this work, and they, I, and, and they thought I did such a good job that they, 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 they linked the dang reports on, on their website and that's a that's so incredible and i, I i'm i'm just i'm i'm elated i think the peace science effort is working and i'm i'm super proud of that so thank you for all your support and i hope that helps okay all right let's move into topic two a time of one hour seven minutes and 43 seconds oh man it is almost 9 p.m i am this day is just a really long day tell you what one second uh, the pre-workout is still, you know, I took I took half a scoop. So what is that? A, the Legion Pulse stuff I took. I took half a scoop. That's a quarter of a serving. And it's still going. That's perfect. See? See? Just a little bit, a little bump. Topic two. June is kicking off. Uh, kicking off strong. There is more data to publish. Tons more to test. Um, Surefire Silicon 556 Mini 2. Knight's Armament 556 QDC CRS PRT ABC DEFG. Guys, if I had a nickel for every time someone asked me to test a Mini 2 from Surefire, dude, I it would be so crazy. The thing is so small. I tested the 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 762 Mini 2. You guys saw how loud it was, right? You saw how loud it was, right? So now now you want the 556 one tested? Okay. So I'm gonna do it. And the only reason I'm doing this, like, just Pew Science funding, because, like, d the amount of people who ask for this silencer, it is not normal. I'm telling you, dude, Surefire silencers, I don't know what you guys, you guys just love these things. That's fine. I mean, I guess I want to know now. I didn't even, I would never even, I would never even look at a Surefire SOCOM 5 and 6 Mini 2. Other than the fact that, like, everyone and their mom wants me to test it on every gun that exists. I'm like, okay. Damn, okay. Relax, you know. But I didn't have, I didn't even have to buy one. A generous benefactor transferred me a brand new one. New, I, I, I opened the packaging myself, brand new. So I'm gonna test that. I'll give it back to them when I'm done. I don't, 
I don't need it. Um, I would I would shout them out. I'm trying to I'm I'm using some opsec on that one. I'm not going to tell you who it is, uh, because they also sent me a Knights Armament silencer. You feel me? It's one of those new 3D printed uh, Knights Armament silencers. The one the one that has a recall going on. Uh, so I'm I'm not going to get to that one for a while because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to transfer it back to him so he can get it all taken care of on the on the up and up. You know, and he's going to send it back to me. So I plan on testing that Knights can with uh, the the QDC three prong that I own. Remember, I bought that QDC three prong to test the other QDC silencers that I borrowed from that Pew Science member. Now, you remember my problem with the MAMS? I I it's a whole thing. If someone has a MAMS or a different mount that they want me to test with that new KAC silencer, email me and let's get that sent to me now. So by the time that recall is done, I'll be. I'll be ready to hit the ground running. Okay, those silencers do not come with mounts. Okay, so the only way I'm even able to shoot that 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 new QDC CRS PRT thing is because I have I have a flash hider. I bought one back in the Dizze. You know what I'm saying? So if you have a mount that are like, oh, I don't use a three prong. I want some. Cool, send it to me. That way I can do all the tests at once and I'll be done with it. Then I can send this KAC silencer back to its father. Okay. Okay, I I just want to make sure whatever Knights Armament data I get for the public and for members is primo awesome because I know people are going to laugh and cry and jump up and down and also commit seppuku. <laughs> What's the thing where the <laughs> samurais disembowel themselves? <laughs> people get so emotional about Knights Armament data, which is fine. Um, I just want to make sure whatever I get for the public and for the paid members is is awesome. Now, Knights Armament, they have a huge R and D and engineering budget. I have I have I have spoken with Knights. They are cool. They are making enough of these that I'm I am not going to wait on them. I'm just I'm just making it happen at this point. I'm just like no, that it's too important. I'll, I'll, I'm just going to go ahead and, and use member funding to do it. It's going to be too important to miss. The silencer is different enough that we need the good data anyway. They're, it's not a run-of-the-mill 506 silencer. They're claiming this thing to do things that other silencers don't do. So I I, I am going to test it. I, I want to know for myself because if it's super awesome, I'm going to buy one for myself. <laughs> Okay, it's like because I was I've been uh, a little a little birdie told me they are going to be making a lot of these, so I'm like, okay, well, we'll see. Let me see how it does. Okay, Pew Science, baby. For, this is this is one of those things for the people that I'm like taking the initiative on. I'm like, no, this is this is a big name, and I I want to know, and 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 this is like, and they went so far as to do a recall preemptively, so they don't put stuff like that out on the market that's like not some kind of final version. See, because I don't. Some people have been emailing me, asking me to test some things that, like, I'm not so sure are even finalized yet. Because, like, I keep seeing these silencers that break all the time. And people are like, Jay, will you test this? Will you test this? But I, I see these silencers are breaking all the time. And I'm like, why would I test something, put all that internal research funding from members that contribute all the time? To put all that research funding into testing a silencer that breaks all the time, what? So then the manufacturer can issue a, a revision and not tell anybody, and it'll be different, and then and then and then it won't. Then the performance won't match up, and then we run into like a nomad situation or something. No, 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 homie, don't play that. I'm not doing that. I'm not wasting my time, and I'm not wasting yours. Okay, I'm waiting until the silencers are done, silencers are mature, and then I test them. Okay, unless a company pays for it, that's different. They want me to. They want Pew Science to be do R and D for them. Th that's what you can pay a lab for. Do that, okay? But what I'm going to use uh, Pew Science member funding, and you guys are going to run R and D on the Pew Science members? No, 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 no. We're not doing that game anymore. Uh, uh we're not doing that. It's not good for the consumer. It's not good for Pew Science. It's not good for the community. It's not good for the industry. We're not doing that, okay? We're testing mature, functional, finished silencers. Full stop. Okay. Okay, so thanks, guys. I'm going to get some member stuff out for you, too. Um, soon, I just, I'm regrouping, man. May may hit me hard. <laughs> okay, let me let me regroup after May. I'm going to hit some more client. I got some client publications, too. Where I got some contracts that aren't done. We got to got some, publish some stuff uh, out of those. Uh, we're going to figure out some cool stuff to help you, uh, uh, help you people that help me. Um, 
I want to help members out, give you some cool stuff, okay? Now, I will say this. You should have gotten a welcome email very, very recently. If you have not, please let me know. I, I caught up on those this past weekend. Um, so please let me know. If if you didn't receive a welcome email and you joined recently and we talked via email, I went ahead and I, I, I did not send you another email to welcome you because I was like, ah, it's redundant. I wouldn't be weird about it, okay? All right. So stay safe out there, friends, Okay? This pre-workout got me through this. It's gotten me through the work, these hard workouts this week when I've been busy and tired. It got me through this podcast. It's 9 p.m. It got me through it. Legion Athletics, Coward Pew Science, baby. I can't believe they sponsored me. Oh, it's so crazy. Oh, it's so wild. I got, a supplement company sponsored me. I, 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 they didn't sponsor me when I powerlifted, but they sponsored me when I do this. Oh, what do they call? What do the kids call that? The glow up? Oh, the glow up, baby. All right. Stay safe. Say your prayers, drink your milk, take your vitamins, lift weights, ride your bike, call your mother. I'll talk with you folks again soon. All right, bye.